boys and girls, welcome back to Storytime Adventures with Miss Shauna and Mr. Potato Head. Hello, boys and girls. I'm so happy to see you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Storytime Adventure Time. So, Miss Shauna. Yes, Mr. Potato Head. What is the story going to be about? It's going to be adventure, it's going to be funny, it's going to be silly, it's going to be serious. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? What is it going to be? I'll let it know. I'll let it know. Um, Mr. Potato Head, calm down. He gets very excited when it's story time because there's always different stories. And yeah, we don't know what the story is going to be about. So today's story today is called Too Perfect. This is what the story is called. Looking at this story, what do you think this might be about? What do you think it might be about, Mr. Potato Head? Mm, let me see. Mm. Um, it looks like it's in class and the title, Too Perfect. What does too perfect, what does that mean, Miss Shauna? Well, we'll find out in the story what too perfect means. Are you all ready for the story? All right, let's get ready. Too perfect. Okay, Mr. Potato Head. Have you ever wished you could be somebody else? I have. I wish I was Kayla. Then all my problems would go away like magic. Poof, no frizzy hair and freckles. I have cool clothes instead of boring hand-me-downs. I'll get straight A's instead of a bunch of B's and C's. I'd be better if I was smarter, thinner, prettier, and if I had more friends. Mom always said, Macy, you're perfect just the way you are. But she didn't know perfect. She didn't know Kayla. In class, I watched Kayla all the time. If I looked hard enough, maybe I'd find the secret to being perfect. Then I live happily ever after, just like Kayla. A few weeks ago, my teacher, Miss Kim, assigned Kayla to my science project partner. So on Monday after school, we got together at Kayla's house to start working on our project. What's that? She asked when she saw the plate I was holding. Brownies, I said. My mom baked them for, um, for a study treat. You want one? No, thanks. I've already eaten. While we studied, I ate a brownie. Every time I took a bite, Kayla watched me. Are you sure you don't want a brownie? I asked her. I already told you I had a snack. She snapped back. Besides, my mom says eating sweets make you fat. Did Kayla think I was fat? I put my brownie down and I didn't take another bite. On Thursday, mom dropped me off at Kayla's soccer game so we can work on our project afterwards. I watched Kayla run up and down the soccer field. She was so fast. If I played like her, I bet those girls would love to have me on their team. Pass the ball, Kayla shouted at Anna. Her teammate passed it on now. Anna did what Kayla told her. But when Kayla finally kicked the ball, she missed the goal. This is your fault, Kayla hissed at Anna. If you had passed the ball to me sooner, 
I would have had a perfect shot. It's just a game, Kayla. We're supposed to be having fun, said another teammate. I'm not here for fun. I'm here to win, she replied as she stumped off the field. Hey, Kayla, I shouted, running after her. You were great out there. Not great enough, she mumbled as she looked at her dad. But you really tried hard to make that goal. What good is trying if I don't win? That's when I started to think that being perfect wasn't easy or fun. On Sunday, Kayla came over so we can finish up our project. Every time she wrote a sentence, she would erase it. Kayla, what are you doing? I asked her. I'm not happy with the ending. It's not enough. I looked over her shoulder, but I like what you wrote. What's wrong with it? Everything, she said, crumbling the report in her hands. Kayla, stop it. I yelled as I grabbed the papers from her. Our report is due tomorrow. You don't understand, said Kayla. And then she started to cry. I tried to make her feel better, but I wasn't much help. Mom overheard Kayla sniffling and asked her if she was okay. I, I'm just coming down with a, <laughs> with a cold. I could tell mom didn't believe her, but she left us alone anyway. After Kayla went home, mom asked me why she'd been crying. I explained what happened with her about our report. Everything Kayla does has to be perfect. Too perfect if you ask me, I grumbled. Then I told mom how angry Kayla got at the soccer game. I had also overheard Kayla saying that she was going on a diet so she could be super thin like her big sister. I can't believe Kayla thinks she's fat. I said, I'd be so happy if I looked like her. Mom was quiet after that. I asked mom if she was ever disappointed in me because I wasn't as thin, smart, or pretty as she liked me to be. Honey, I love you for who you are, she answered. Not for who you think I want you to be. Life isn't perfect. We aren't perfect, Mom added. But by trying new things and learning from our mistakes, we can become better at whatever we choose to do. Macy, do you remember when you took swimming lessons? Uh-huh. I was so scared at first. But then the more you practice, the stronger you got. And now I love to swim, I said. Are you happy doing what you love to do? Yeah. Do you know what makes Kayla happy, Mom asked. I thought hard about it for a few minutes, but I couldn't come up with anything, which really surprised me. Kayla was as close to perfect as anyone I knew, but I couldn't think of one thing that made her happy. Mom told me that lots of kids and even grown-ups put pressure on themselves or felt pressure by others to act or look a certain way. Being happy doesn't come from being perfect, she said. It comes from trusting and accepting who you are, mistakes and all.
On Monday, Kayla didn't come to school. I waited until after school to hand in our report. When Mrs. Kim asked me why it was all crumbled, I told her what happened the night before. Then she asked more questions. I didn't want to answer because I was afraid of getting Kayla in trouble. Macy said, Miss Kim, I'm just trying to understand how big of a problem this is for Kayla. So I told her what I've told my mom. You obviously care about Kayla. Thanks for letting me know, said Miss Kim. I meet with a school counselor to see what we can do to help Kayla. When I came home from school that day, I told mom about what my talk with Miss Kim was about. She was glad that I shared my worries with my teacher. Then mom suggested we have appreciation time. Once a week where we take turns at the dinner table saying one thing that we appreciate about each other. Let's celebrate who we are instead of complaining about what we aren't, she explained. Appreciation time has helped me a lot. Hearing my family say how much they appreciate me feels really good. I also like seeing how happy my family and friends are when I tell them what I like and respect about them. I know I'm not perfect, but that doesn't mean I can't do things. Mom says no one can do a better job being Macy than me. You know what? And I think she's right. And that is the end of Too Perfect. Boys and girls, what did you learn from this story? What was the problem in the story? How did she try to help solve the problem? And boys and girls, I really like how she had a time to appreciate yourself. That no one is perfect. Like who you are, celebrate who you are. Look in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm okay with me. And when you look in the mirror and say, what do you like about yourself? Then share with your family what you like about yourself. Share with your family and friends also what you like about them. I think it's really important that we celebrate and tell people how they make us feel and what we like about them. And most of all, love who you are because Ms. Shana loves exactly who you are. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the story of Too Perfect. Please share with me and let me know if you like the story or what did you learn from the story? I love to know. Have a great day, boys and girls. Till next time. Tell Mr. Potato, tell him bye. Bye, boys and girls. Until next time. Bye-bye.